Segment two, the two Georges. I'd like to spend most of this segment on George W., no surprise to you. But give me, you, you begin with executive power in George Washington. How did he make use of these latent or inherent authorities, briefly? Yeah. Well, one thing is Washington decided right away that he wasn't going to be a prime minister. He was going to be a president. He did not think he worked for Congress. He didn't think he represented a majority party in Congress. He, in fact, hated political parties. He uh, wanted to maintain the independent stature of his office. So, for example, one of the famous examples is uh, the Senate has the power to give advice and consent to treaties. Washington went once at the very beginning of his administration to actually ask the Senate what it thought. What do you he, tell us? What's your advice, fellas? Yeah, what right. do you think? Exactly. He said, I want to make a treaty with the Indians. What do you guys think before we negotiate it? He thought it was such a terrible experience that he said he stormed out of the Senate chamber and he said, I'll be damned if I ever show up there again. And that's the last time, the first time and the last time a president has ever gone to the Senate in person to talk about advice and consent. All right, George W. Bush. After 9-11, you note in Crisis and Command, President Bush received from Congress an authorization to use military force. I'm quoting from your book. It was sweeping, perhaps the broadest grant of war power by Congress since the World War II. It authorized the president, and now you're quoting from the authorization, to use all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons he determines, planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks. Close quote. Several questions. Number one, for a layman, why did the president request and Congress grant an authorization to use military force instead of his requesting and their enacting a declaration of war, which is the language of the Constitution. It's yes. what FDR requested after Pearl Harbor. What, why? First, let me uh, also uh, make clear that I was one of the people who worked on the authorization when I was in the Bush administration. Ah, so you're quoting yourself cleverly. <laughs> well, the Senate and the House passed it. All right, all right. <laughs> but I did work on it, and I did... Uh, help with the executive branch congressional negotiations. But the first thing is the United States just doesn't declare war anymore. It hasn't declared war since 1945. And instead, it passes these authorizations for force or to use force instead. So Korea... So you and the president were simply accepting political reality. Would it have been cleaner if you had had your way? Would you have sought a declaration of war? Well, the other thing is it's not clear to me that a declaration of war was necessary when we were fighting a non-state. You know, we're fighting the Al Qaeda terrorist organization, which is not a nation, right? And so, um, it seemed to me, in part, declarations of war are for the very purpose of notifying another country, one that obeys the rules of war itself. Here, we're fighting a group that's more like pirates. You know, these are not people who follow any of the rules of war. They're not nations. You can't really negotiate with them. Uh, they don't follow any okay. of the civilized rules. So, it's not clear to me that a declaration of war is even appropriate for them. Was the authorization itself necessary, or on your reading of the Constitution, did the president already possess the, th the authority to go after these bandit-like terrorists? Was he merely engaging in a gesture or paying Congress a courtesy? I think the president already had the authority under the Constitution to react to a direct attack on the United States, but the authorization was a way um, to build political support. Right, to make sure that everyone knew in the country and abroad that the president and Congress were united, united in their uh, agreement to attack al-Qaeda, take all necessary measures. So it was a merely a political instrument rather than a constitutional necessity. I think so, yes. All right. Now, before going into Iraq, President Bush seeks a second authorization to use military force. And this authorization enabled the president, A, quote, uh, a, to, quote, defend the United States against the continuing threat posed by Iraq, and B, quote, and force all relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions regarding Iraq. A, defending us against the continuing threat posed by Iraq, gets taken care of the moment we realize there are likely, there are no weapons of mass destruction, right? And B, uh, enforcing United Nations Security Council resolutions, that's taken care of the moment three weeks into the invasion, Saddam Hussein's government is toppled. So we've got an authorization to use force that pretty clearly, on a layman's reading, authorizes the first three weeks of the war, which then goes on for years. Hmm. Okay, so, 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 well, so. Well, first, Congress never, right, took the authorization back. It still exists and is in force now because it's commonly thought part of war is also occupying the enemy's territory and restoring the government. And that's more what we do. As you say, we have 
combat operations against Saddam Hussein's regime ended very quickly and fairly short order it was discovered there were no weapons of mass destruction. Right. But there's but still the continuing obligation to occupy the country, restore it to some amount of order, and put in some kind of regime. Would you have liked, so uh, uh, I guess there's several possibilities there. One is the president didn't really need an authorization in the first place, so once the specific tasks he had been authorized to accomplish were accomplished, he was still authorized by his inherent powers to remain in Iraq and do what he sought, what he considered necessary to defend our country and put that one back together. Is that your argument? Would you have preferred it at the time or in retrospect if the president had gone back and gotten another authorization once events had changed? Well, how do you think about that, that the, yeah. the long period yeah. when the president seemed to be waging that war? Obviously, this was not the case. He had support among the military, large side, but the press, many members of Congress accused him of waging that war on his own. There was a unilateral right. quality about it. The other side right. asserted. Right, right. Well, first, I... I Constitutionally, I think he could have used force there on his own. And as I point out in the book, presidents have done that before. But I think as a political matter, it was a smart move to get congressional authorization. I think presidents are wise generally to get them when they can because it makes sure that congressmen won't jump off the ship when the going gets tough, which they have almost bred into their DNA. I mean, right. You had people who had voted for the authorization to go into Iraq attacking the war a mere year or two later just because they didn't like the way it had been going. And so if, if uh, I think politically if the president hadn't got those uh, senators and congressmen to vote for it, the eventual surge and uh, sort of victory in Iraq, which I think we're approaching, would have been almost politically impossible. Okay. Last I'll put this one to you briefly if that is not a dirty trick. You write in Crisis in Command. Bush's reputation will depend on whether future historians judge his exercise of presidential power to have been justified by the circumstances, close quote. You're confident they will do so? I'm not sure. I think I, I had a lot of questions myself about the Iraq war in terms of uh, strategically whether it made sense to go in. I didn't know. But also the uh, reconstruction of Iraq. I personally favored splitting the country up into three pieces, pieces and leaving faster the Peter than we Galbraith, did. Uh, I thought of it first, though. <laughs> <Did you really? laughs> but I think that, you know, that, that had an a lot of attractions to me. Um, you know, and the administration chose to keep the country whole and to spend more time there. That may end up being the better course of action. I, I don't know. I think it's way too early. So to there tell. are close and difficult questions there, even in your mind, you who participated in the administration. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Okay.